Hey there, welcome to the second series on cloud security from Kato Security. My name is Chris Doman. I'm the CTO and co-founder of Kato. So today we're going to talk about AWS Iron Forensics and Instant Response. So starting to kind of dig a bit more into the weeds around some of the services you might see when responding to instance at AWS. So first off, what are some of the cloud security instant domains? So there's this great white paper from AWS, uh, the Instant Response Guide. They go through the three kind of core instant domains you might encounter. So the first one is what we're going to be talking about today. It's the service domain. So that includes things like AWS IAM, which we'll get into in a minute. Things like metadata, resources, the billing, that kind of stuff too. After that, we're going to the infrastructure domain. So infrastructure domain is more things like actually inside the servers, so a bit more kind of traditional instant response and forensics. And then finally, the application domain. So your actual software and the code therein, which we won't really touch on today. So what is AWS IAM? Well, you're probably familiar with IAM of some sort, perhaps from other resources, either in other cloud providers or on-prem. It's identity and access management. So at its core, you have your identities, so users, groups, roles, so on. And then you have permissions, which decide whether or not you have access to do things. So there's kind of actions against resources, which we'll get into in a minute. So basically, whether or not you can do stuff. And there's this core workflow, which kind of governs how this flows through. Um, we've got it in this kind of diagram example here. But the key, you have the principles, so the kind of entities that perform those actions, the actual authentication, so determining if you can do that kind of stuff too. Then we have the authorization as well, uh, which is then determined based on policies, which we'll get into in a minute. So just to briefly touch on policies in particular, because when you're doing instant response, these will be pretty key to and work out what happened and why. You also need these in order to get data from systems, it's so basically forensics and instant response. And this screenshot here, this uh, this might scare you if you know uh, policies at all. So this is star, star. This means you have access to basically anything to anything. Um, policies, in this case, JSON documents, and they determine over multiple statements what you can or cannot do. I'll get into a minute some ways to help you debug these two. So in terms of how IAM works, I'm actually not going to get into it. It's pretty detailed. I'll probably get it wrong. There's a fantastic talk by Becky Rice. Uh, she's from AWS, and she goes into this in her talk. So do you check that out. About the core, that you have the normal kind of control and data plane, but then you also have that auth data plane, which is where I am you know, mostly kind of interacts. So with identity federation, again, I won't go into too much detail here, but it's good to be aware of it, particularly if you're kind of responding, basically because there might be logs in other services outside of AWS you need to check as well. So you can have uh, something else, which is kind of forming auth and user management. So it's useful if you have a, an active users kind of directory that you've been, you know, might have been in your company for 20 years. You can set your link that up to AWS, then perform some of it there as well. So just be aware there's um things get pretty complicated if you start to encounter this. So what I am logging is there. Uh, well, the core of it is in CloudTrail, as you probably expect, because this is API calls we're talking about. That includes things like the secure token server, so checking whether or not you can get tokens to do things. Uh, it goes into a lot of detail if you've enabled that kind of full logging. Also be aware of, you have the access analyzer. So essentially a nice kind of overlay and UI, um, helping to walk you through um, IAM events. And then more on the kind of debugging side, if you're trying to get access to things, there's also the IAM policy simulator. So that can tell you what policies you might need to change and, and why. So how do you uh, block access in AWS IAM? This is an example how you might respond after something bad has happened. There's actually um, some great labs here from AWS themselves that go through this. You can do things like you can add denial um, effects as a statement into policies. So that way you can kind of deny access to things pretty easily. Again, run through this kind of run book and that'll go through how to do that. There's also some more uh, well kind of labs that also go through how to investigate this too. So there's a really useful Jupyter notebook um, also published by under this series as well. And I go th through things like investigating key access. So for example, who created an access key? What did the access key do? Uh, what policies and groups are attached to, all that kind of stuff. So that's well worth checking out as well, and basically it runs over the top of some cloud logs. In terms of Kato response, um, we use IAM in a few different ways in terms of deployment and also how we respond. But probably the, the key ways are that we can help you to isolate IAM roles. So you can, for example, have a guard duty um, alert that kicks off. We can then automatically investigate that instance. If we determine automatically it probably is compromised, as well as doing things like isolating the instance from the network or stopping it, we also isolate the role attached as well. We can also do investigations too. So we can pass all the CloudTrail logs, you go through and hunt to your heart's content to try and work out what might have happened in, um, 
the previous incident. And on that, that note, we also have a free 14-day trial on our website, so feel free to check that out as well. Thanks. Mm -hmm.